All right, so for day one of our main lecture, we're going to talk about social media marketing. This is uh, marketing 2.0. Let's contrast that. What would you think is marketing 1.0? When you hear the word marketing, what what do you think it is the definition, or what do you think about when you hear the word marketing? Anyone? Promotion and communication. Promotion, communication, advertising, promotion, communication, advertising. So that ad in the paper is marketing 1.0. That uh, radio ad is marketing, traditional marketing. Um, that billboard in on the five is marketing. So a classic form of marketing is anything, you know, in the physical, in the real world, that guy spinning that sign around at the corner doing those cool tricks, that's marketing. He's trying to get your attention to come to the mattress sale. So marketing, traditional marketing is often some sort of physical marketing. So if we're contrasting that with marketing 2.0, the new generation of marketing, what do you think that is? Virtual. Virtual, so that would be Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, etc., etc., etc. All of these social networks. So we're going to use these social networks as marketing platforms, advertising platforms, advertising channels. In the real world, uh, I'm trying to reach an audience that is really interested in my home improvement uh, store, you know, my hardware store. Let's say I'm, I'm one of the ones that still has a mom and pop, uh, mom and pop shop hardware store. Uh, remember, anyone remember Builders Emporium and all of those back in the day? Uh, so I would put an ad for my business in the Penny Saver or in the Union Tribune or on 91X or on KPBS. I would put marketing to reach an audience in the, in the traditional sense. In the new sense, I have to do something similar with social media. With most traditional marketing, it's not free. It costs money to put that ad in the paper or on the radio or on the five on that billboard and hopefully you're paying minimum wage to the poor guy on the sidewalk flipping your sign in the 90 degree weather. So it's not free to market in the real world. If you're gonna put a you know a flyer on someone's windshield, is that free? Why? You have to pay for it. Yeah. You have to pay for it. You have to pay to go to Kinko's or print it on your own computer and then you run out of ink. So this digital marketing, this traditional marketing is not free. Social marketing, free. Let me put it in quotes, free. Because there is a version that is completely free and a version for pay. It's completely free to create a Twitter account. It's completely free to create a Facebook account. It's completely free to tweet all day long. It's completely free to use Instagram all day long. But there are versions and instances where you can pay Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat to reach more people. So I'm going to cover both of those. Focus on the free. I'm going to focus on the free in this class, but I will cover the paid stuff to reach an audience. In the real world, I've got a restaurant on Main Street if I try to only rely on word of mouth, if I only rely on people walking in front of my restaurant and deciding to walk in, I may not get a lot of clientele and I may, may not make a lot of sales. If I rely on that one person that came in, they had a great time and I ask them, uh, please tell your friends. They might tell two friends or they might not. And that word of mouth doesn't take you very far. So most businesses in the real world have to engage in some form of paid marketing. Put that radio ad, put that ad in the paper, print out those flyers and put it on people's windshields. Same thing with social media. You can go pretty far with the, with the free aspects, but you will go farther with the uh, paid 
aspects, and we'll cover both. Now, of course, at any time as the lecture goes on, if you have a follow-up question and all of that, feel free to raise your hand and we'll answer it. So um, let's bring it back together here with social media is marketing. Social media has two aspects. Fun, frivolous, personal. The other aspect is professional. Um, business. Right, those two contrasts. People you can use social media to show you, look at what I had for breakfast. Or to tell you, hey, I'm at the Eiffel Tower. And connecting with friends and family. I'm having a birthday this week. Come by. You know, we've got the personal aspect of that. We've got the fun frivolous aspect, which is legitimate, of course. People uh, use it uh, legitimately for personal purposes. And business is also legitimate. So sometimes people come in with this preconceived notion, which is deserved, that, well, Instagram, that's just the place where the kids, you know, harass each other. Or Snapchat, that's the place where people send those, those, <coughs> those racy pictures to each other. Yeah, all of these networks have that, that usage of frivolity and personal. But all of these networks also have that purpose of professional and business. So we're going to use social network focused on the business or professional aspect. We're not going to use Facebook, like I said, learn how to send a message to your friends and family or invite them to a baby shower and such. We're going to use these networks to reach an audience. We use social media, social networks, social media as a marketing tool. Yes? I have a question. Would you suggest uh, creating two accounts, let's say Facebook, one for personal, one for business? Or is it for when, when we talk about Facebook in a couple of weeks, we will see that many networks let you create one account and then create multiple accounts attached to the same account. So you can use your personal account to then create business accounts, and they will not mix together. So we can do that on Pinterest, we can do that on Google+, on Facebook. Most networks let you have one login to manage multiple accounts. You don't have to create a different lap login and password for different ones. It's already the personal, so we learn how to add. Yes, okay. exactly. So we use social media as a marketing tool for a captive audience. When you put that billboard of your business, of your plumbing business, on the highway, Lots of people will see it as they drive by. And especially if someone commutes often, they will see it and they will notice it. If they commute often, they will see, oh, a new billboard. And they'll look at it for a few seconds and they may or may not care. I don't need a plumber. But when they need a plumber, they might remember. I saw an ad for that plumber. Let me call them. So we have this concept of impressions. A person sees your ad, your, your content, that billboard. Someone saw it. But then a conversion, a person acts on your ad, the content. What is someone acting on that billboard? What does that mean? What do you think? Calling. Calling. So if I've got a phone number, on my billboard, I'm showing my phone number to thousands of people, but not everyone is actually going to call until they need me. So in marketing terms, an impression is that someone um, simply sees my ad, but what's more valuable is a conversion. They were converted from someone that didn't care about me or call me. Um, or you know, mail me or whatever, they were converted into someone that did call me or email me or come to my business. If I put all of these flyers on people's windshields, those are impressions. People saw it, they were impressed uh, by it, uh, they saw it, but uh, they didn't act upon it. They didn't call the number, they didn't come uh, on Monday at 11.30. There was no conversion. So we have those terms as well in 
uh, digital marketing. I'm going to tweet to all of my 20 followers. Those were impressions. My 20 followers saw it, perhaps. But only one actually responded or went to the website to buy the product. The conversion rate was low. One result out of, you know, 10 tweets. So we have um, CTR, click-through rate, click-through rate, which is a simple formula of uh, conversions divided by impressions equals CTR. So let's say the uh, that billboard that's on the five, I have a statistic that 1,024 people see it per day, um, and I get 45 calls. 45 divided by 1,024, 0 0.4. So I have 1,024 impressions, 1,024 1, people saw it. You get 45 calls. That was a calculation of 0.4% uh, uh, or 4%. Just rounding it, 4.4% success rate. CTR, click-through rate. It's a simple division. I know I got this number of calls because this number of people saw the billboard. Division is 4%. So I got a 4% success rate. That might sound terrible. I, I want a 50%, a 90%, I want a 100%. Good luck. Even huge companies like Coca-Cola that spend billions of dollars, probably on advertising, don't get 90%, 60%, 50%, 40%. They don't get such high results. But they get enough of a result from what they've spent, enough of a return on investment that it works for them. I, you know, I'm never going to drink a Coke in my life. I don't, I don't want it, let's say. Well, I, I've lost them money because they've advertised to me. I didn't follow through. They lost money with me. But maybe five other people did feel thirsty and wanted to buy it, and so that offsets the loss from me. So most of the time, CTR is very low. It's normal. So less than 5% is extremely common. Greater than 5%, you're amazing, because you've got either a very good product, very good marketing strategy, you've got something, you've got luck, something happened and you had very good success rate. Maybe you've fully targeted You've segmented and all of these other buzzwords I'll talk about, but maybe you've reached the exact audience you're trying to reach. This is like I'm a I'm a pet food, I'm a pet shop, and I want to sell cat food. Well, I might have a better success rate if I go to a place and give out free samples of this cat food where there's a cat convention, instead of going simply to the park and giving samples to random people. I'm not at the right place for my product. Social media, getting back to what I said over here, a captive audience. That billboard might have such a very low conversion rate because everyone is driving by it. A lot of people are not caring or paying attention or disgruntled because they're in traffic. But then some people will say, I do need that plumber, and I will, and I will call them. One way in traditional marketing that people can have better success again is by targeting. If I've got that hardware store, and I want to advertise on TV. What channels would I advertise on? MTV? VH1? CNN? What are some channels I might want to advertise if I've got a home improvement store? HGTV. HGTV. Um, and the other such ones like that. What other ones? There's HGTV. Uh, home Life? Is that a channel? There's a bunch of channels. Now that we've got 500 channels, there's a bunch of channels about home improvement. So if I put my ad of a home improvement store on a home improvement channel, I will probably get better results than putting that ad on a news channel. 
then on a youth channel, then on a movie channel. So our captive audience of social media, the great thing about social media, you can target your message more effectively. Contact the exact contact the best prospective customers where they are most apt to be found. That's your captive audience. As you build followers, you build a captive audience. Therefore, getting or building followers, getting followers, is paramount, is highly important. We need as many followers as possible. I need to get 10, 20, 50, 100, 1,000 followers on Twitter. I need to get 500 likes on Facebook. I need to get 200 subscribers on YouTube. They've all got different names. Followers, subscribers, likes, etc. They've all got different names, but they're all paying attention to you. We need to Build the number of those paying attention to you. In the real world, that's much more difficult. As I said, you can try to put that ad on the right channel at the right time to reach the right audience. But you're trying to do that, and other savvy marketers are also trying to do that. And two commercials cannot run at the same time on the same channel. So one's going to pay more to put my ad, and you you didn't pay enough, so you can't put that ad. You, 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 you missed out on an audience in the real world. In the digital world, you can tweet all day long for free. You can put videos on YouTube all day long for free. You can use Snapchat. You can snap on Snapchat all day long for free. And you can target the exact people in the exact network. When we talk about network demographics, you might figure out which is the best network for you to target. But you can target the right audience at the right time, at your pace, in your budget, on these networks. That's the whole purpose of social media for business. We'll talk about how do we get those followers? How do we keep those followers? And these concepts will come up over and over, because I'll talk about it today in Twitter. But those concepts will also apply with maybe a few modifications on Facebook. And those concepts will apply on YouTube with some modifications. So, we can think about engaging in paid social media marketing. If you pay, if you pay, you can reach the right audience a little faster or effectively possibly as little as one dollar per campaign because in the real world if I want to put my ad let's say I want to get a really big audience on TV I got a great idea. I'm going to put my local hardware store's commercial during the Super Bowl. So that's going to cost a few million dollars to put a 30 second ad in the Super Bowl. Okay, well, let me put it instead on TV during a local game. That's still going to be hundreds or thousands of dollars. Okay, let me put my ad on TV, uh, you know, in the middle of the day uh, after work, after work hours, you know, 6 p.m. It's going to cost less. So advertising in the real world, what I'm getting at, is often pretty expensive. Advertising in the digital world, you can see that you will get some results even with as little as one dollar. If you have no followers at all and you pay the networks a dollar, you can reach more people. And we'll get to the paid stuff more in detail when we talk about Facebook. We're going to cover the free stuff today with Twitter, Google Plus next week free, uh, and then on Facebook in, in two weeks, we'll cover the free and paid aspects of social media. But whatever we then cover in Facebook regarding paid tactics will also apply 
on Twitter and all the other networks. Any questions so far? Quick question for all of you. How many of you have either a personal or a business account in any social network? Most people. Good. How many of you then have any uh, social network where you have a business social network profile? A lot less people. Okay, we'll talk about that, of course. If you've got uh, one of these business social network accounts, how many of you have used it within the past month? Okay, within the past week? Within the past hour? Okay. So, we will create the network if you don't have it. We will talk about the difference between the personal and the professional networks uh, with a focus on the professional one. We will talk about strategies of how often should I use them, how should I use them, what should I share, how should I set it up. We'll cover all of that. If we don't cover it all today on Twitter, we're going to continue it next time with Google+. Again, these, these things are all related to each other. So uh, today's idea is we're going to cover Twitter. How many of you have, a, have either a personal or professional Twitter account? Uh, good amounts of people, good. Okay, Twitter is one of the outliers. Most social networks differentiate, differentiate, differentiate between personal account and business account. Oftentimes the very generic terms will be profile and page. Very generic term. I'm going to mix it up too. So technically, a Facebook profile is a person. And technically, a Facebook page is a business. So person, business. Most social networks have one or the other. Most social networks let you create one account, usually a personal, and then add on one or more uh, professional pages. I was about to say profile. Personal pages. So Facebook. Most people use Facebook for friends and family. You create an account, I connect with my friends and family, we, we, we chat and we have fun and all of that. With that same login in two weeks, we'll see that then we can create the business page and they will not be connected. And people that visit your business page will not know that you, the person, created it. Your stuff will not show up on the business or vice versa unless you choose it to connect. So people always ask me that. Uh, you know, uh, should I create a different account? Should I use a different email? Should I use a professional email, personal email? It's kind of a moot point. It doesn't quite matter. It's for you to decide. But basically, one login can often let you create multiple business listings or business pages. The outlier, except for Twitter. Twitter has one login attached to one account either personal or professional. So if, you, if you've already got your Twitter account and it's set up with your you know, Cox email account, you're going to need a different email account to create another Twitter account. One email to log in to one account, uh, personal or biz. No social networks give you the ability to have managers. Others that will help you run the account. So I don't want to give my personal password to my Facebook to the employees of my business for them to put up an ad that there's a sale this Saturday. Giving them my personal email with password gives them access to all my embarrassing stuff. So most networks give you the ability to, act, uh, to, to set managers. You log in with your password and, and email, you log in with yours, and you have access to post or change or update the page. Uh, 
Um, so those are this concept of managers is very useful. Almost all the networks have a variation of it. We can see that in Twitter and in Facebook, Google Plus, uh, most networks. We will do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Go ahead and open up your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here, any one you'd like. And let's go to twitter.com. Knowing what I've talked about, we're either going to log in or sign up. And again, this is optional. You don't have to create it. You don't have to do it here. If you're not comfortable doing this in a public lab, you can take notes, watch the video, do it at home. And so you want to go to twitter.com, and here you will either log in or sign up. We're going to take our break so that you can decide one of these two. If you want to create a brand new account, you'll have to follow a few steps. Try it on your own. During this break, you can uh, ask questions if you're having trouble. But either you're going to log in or sign up at twitter.com. I would say, what I usually say in this class, you might already have a business Twitter account ready to use. I would still sort of recommend to sign up with a brand new account so that you can make mistakes and change it and learn and not apply it to your real account. If you log in with your real business's account right now and we're trying to practice these concepts of how to upload an album or how to uh, use hashtags, you would be doing it on your real account. You can create a free fake account going into the, the, the button there of sign up. You can make all of this up. I think it'll even let you without even a real email address. That's what we'll do here. Um, we'll take a break. It's just about 12, uh, 10.45. Take a break until 10.55. Uh, 10 10.55, 10 minutes. We'll take a quick 10 minute break. Uh, sign in or sign up to Twitter. If you're having trouble, call me over, but then we'll continue in 10 minutes. If you 